I think that the reason that people dig is because they want to have a say in what is new. Yeah, I go to dig for all my news. The best part about dig is the community. I love hearing what people have to say about the stories. It's the diggers who make or break whether or not a topic or a story becomes popular on the internet, in the media in general today. Hello and welcome to the Street Savers. I'm Alex Albright. And I'm Kevin Rose. Thanks for joining us. That sounds very official, yes, Kevin indeed. Rose. So in 2004, I was 27 years old and I was hosting a television show uh, on Tech TV called The Screen Savers. I was also a big geek, so Slashdot was a, one of my daily kind of news sources. Users would come and submit stories. I wanted to see what would happen if the users could vote on the stories and determine which ones went on the front page. I remember I was thinking, okay, so these links, they're buried beneath the surface, and people are going to go in, and they're going to vote on them, they're going to kind of dig them up. DIG.com was a Disney Interactive Group, and they definitely weren't going to sell me the domain. And then I was like, okay, well, what if it just add an extra G on to the end? And I was just hoping people would use it. I was hoping that eventually it would grow to become popular enough to where I could pay my rent. Paris Hilton had her phone book, her address book, and some naked photos that were posted online. It was the first index story on Google for their search results. It sent us too much traffic and our servers just collapsed under the load. It just showed us that the model was working and that as we got more and more users, we were able to pull in and break news stories faster than anyone. There was a point where I realized that Dig was taking off. I, mean, I didn't know the first thing about raising money or sitting down with VCs, and so that's when um, I offered Jay the role of CEO. And by the time that we had really executed on, uh, on so much of the business plan by that point, I was hooked. Kevin on the cover of Business Week was a classic moment for the company because it really signaled in the media's acceptance that this is an important movement. We want to hear what you care about what you want to hear from the politicians. Dig represents uh, an addiction, a daily addiction, and my favorite moment was the Dig Revolt in 2007 over the HD DVD key. There was a story about an HD DVD key that had been released in the wild. The key for cracking HD DVDs had been leaked out, and by the time it had like, you know, easily 10,000 digs, was when we had received a legal letter that says you should take this thing off of your website. Try and imagine what it's like if you're a user of the site. You see this really popular article disappear. Once there's a 10,000 dig story, it just can't go away. The user's reaction was to get to a point where they were submitting articles with the key in the title once every two seconds. I would rather, much rather go down fighting through a lawsuit than, than really uh, destroy the community that, that built us into what we were uh, today. My favorite dig moment was when Obama was elected and watching all the digs fly off the charts on election night. We realized that the most important thing we had to do is have an open, honest conversation with the dig community at all times and figure out a way in which they could ask us the most important questions that were on their minds. Um, so the purpose of the town hall is to address you, the dig community's top questions voted on by the community. We decided to start doing meetups because we figured it would be a great way to actually get in front of our, our real users. Give me the dig, the The idea with dialogue was that all of the questions would be completely unfiltered and raw, so that the best ones that got voted up were the ones that we asked, like, verbatim. All of these questions that I'll be asking you are not ones that I came up with. These are all submitted by people out on the internet. Um, some of the 35 million visitors that come to dig. Right, crowdsourced. And crowdsourced, exactly. Remember, after the interview, I went to use the bathroom and Al Gore was also using the urinal next to me, and I just, like, couldn't get the stream started. The future of DIG, I think, is, is one that's very challenging and then also has huge upside if, if executed on correctly. So your experience and my experience could be two completely different home pages. And then what if you're interested in some narrow topics that only a small group of people 
are interested in. If we can turn all of these little niche interests into really interesting kind of mini homepages within Dig, uh, Dig will be, you know, many times the size it is today. Right now we're roughly 85 people. All of us would not be here if it weren't for the passion and loyalty of the Dig community and its members. I think if I had to say anything to the Dig community now that it's, you know, it's been five years, it's that, uh, you know, really thank them for sticking with us through this whole course of, of our evolution. We couldn't do it without them. We'll, we'll never stop learning and we'll always try to continue to uh, innovate.